the corporate job dilemma, finding purpose beyond the chains. And this video is for people who are currently in a corporate job and kind of are going, there's got to be more than this to having a job. And I get it. I used to be in your position 15 years ago. What typically happens, people go to college, they educate themselves, and there are these brand names, these brand name company that are marketing to us. And they're willing to give us the opportunities. They want to give us the growth. They also want to give us the safety and the security, the freedom that comes with the money, maybe even living abroad. Maybe even sort of like connecting into our sense of adventure. I backpacked around the world before I went corporate. And I felt with these multi-million dollar budgets and all these expansion opportunities and all these new ideas and innovation, this is the perfect thing for me. And I think many people believe that. We're, we're initially actually really happy in it. It doesn't have to be all awful from the get-go. I really liked the corporate world. And, but slowly but surely, like many of my students, in fact, coming to an NLP training is one of the top 10 reasons why people join my company specifically, because I give small immersion seminars. So you're taken out of your corporate environment for seven or even better, 16 days, and you work on understanding how thoughts work, how emotions work, how behaviors work, how habits work, beliefs work, and, and learn how to deal with that. And I combine that with neuroscience and positive psychology. And so a lot of people come to my training figuring out what to do next. Many of them leave the corporate world, some don't. They transform the way that they are in corporate. Maybe go to a different department, maybe having a change of view or whatever it is. But why is this decision so difficult? Even if for people who are absolutely miserable in their corporate job, it's difficult. Let alone someone who says, you know what, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I just don't have any purpose. I'm, I don't really matter in this world. Is this what my life is going to be about? And then usually when really cool companies stop being cool, there is a dilemma, there may be layoffs and people getting negative. And so in that space, in that decision of that turmoil, often people are needing to make a decision about their career, their job, and switching careers that they've had for their whole waking adult life that I've been building on. So why is that so difficult, even when, when you're in a space of turmoil? Well, there is a huge inner conflict at play. And the way that we try to figure out that inner conflict is say, well, there's money, in, money on one side, and then there is the dream on the other side. Now, here's the issue with that. If you just look at it from that superficial point of view, it's really hard to make a decision. Yes. Underneath it is we do have a drive for safety and security and protection and we want to give this to our children and we're going to, yeah, so absolutely. And so the new thing doesn't seem to represent safety, security. Yeah, if we're the next uh, mogul in the new passion and meaning job, we get lots of money and when everything is safe and secure and we have a proper income to keep having what we have, sure, if that was all there, then we would easily make the move. The problem is we're right now, from a neurological perspective, we are safe. We're in a, a space that is familiar. We know what tomorrow is going to look like. We know what our current life looks like, sounds like, feels like, smells like, tastes like. That's association. When we have our eyes open, we can see it. The problem is with the future that we're going to go to is we cannot see it. We cannot hear it. We cannot feel it, smell it or taste it. Now, the, the, that's why many people don't leave is because they don't know how to light up the brain. So here you're feeling all of these feelings of needing comfort and safety, but you don't know what the future is going to look like. So you need to prime the brain 
in many ways to, sh to briefly break away even from what you're doing and to future pace yourself. What will I see, hear, feel, smell, taste in that future thing? And because many people don't have it well defined, it becomes even harder to really know what it looks like, sounds like, feels like, smells like, tastes like. So you can't light up the brain. The second thing that gets in our way of even future pacing that like a boss, even if we knew that we were going to do, is then there is another issue. And that's the issue of the negative emotions that come with transition. Even though as humans we should be experts at transition, we actually transition comes with negative emotions, even the transitions that we like, like marriage or having a child, right? Is that one is the transition comes with letting go of the comfort of what you know. So the brain is kind of looking around, where is that office? Where are all my friends inside the office? Where's my routine? All of that is taken away. And even if the routine is bad and the people are bad, we're like a little bit disoriented. We're in a new space now. And that can come sometimes with sadness or anger or some kind of discomfort. Then there is a second phase where you know that the old is gone. You don't have it anymore. But the new isn't really there yet. You haven't started yet. Now this is a really hard place. Why is it a hard place? It's because the emotions that are here are about anxiety, they're about fear, they're about worry, they are about, oh, what if I mess it up? What if it doesn't work out? What if, what if, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And even especially if you don't know exactly what you want to do, that's even more disoriented, becomes really scary because you don't know what to do to fix this feeling. And then there is the third phase to it which is you start, you start on building something else. You start on, on, on putting the new project together, the new career together. And that's when your brain is going, oh, I can see this, I can hear this, I can feel this. And some of us kind of go overboard and we're like, I'm a dreamer now. And we start to make really foolish, illogical decisions that actually flag our fear and anxiety. And when we're fearful and, ex and anxious, our brain closes down, it loses flexibility, it loses adaptability, it loses openness, the ability to innovate. And that what a lot of people do, we start to, to listen to other innovators. We go to Bali and get stuck there. And the point is you need to navigate these emotions and you need to get to action, which means that you need to get out of brainstorming mode too because you need to p place your brain into that future, either in your imagination, in the specificity of your goal. And if that's not possible, then you need to really take a sort of like a break from your life so that you can focus future forward and you can use the neurology of the brain to start having different thoughts, different emotions, different behaviors, different people from all over the world to kind of give your brain another, like sort of like a propulsion system out, out of that. And I'm not saying that because of an NLP training, you'll get the plan ready made, but what you will get is that you'll work on that inner conflict, that you understand the thought process, why it's so hard to move out of it, that you start to understand how to set a goal that you understand how to use the conscious and the unconscious mind and navigate the obstacles to get there. That you understand why you, part of you wants to stay where you are and that other thing is terrifying. How you're actually getting activated like your four, five, six year old self as if you're abandoned in the mall by your parents. That activation of childhood trauma, quote unquote, childhood installation becomes very real and 85% of us are having self-esteem issues. So that is something that I feel in an NLP training is navigated, is looked at from different perspectives for yourself to understand how in a layered approach in a space of learning you can use your brain differently and then decide permanently 
to leave corporate, to stay in corporate and repurpose it, reframe it for yourself, maybe find another corporate employer, a smaller company, whatever that would look like for you. And maybe understanding these emotions and, the, and, the, and what comes with transition is allows you to understand why it's so hard to place your brain in the future. Because what you're imagining from that space of the letting go and the negative emotions and the fear and the anxiety, you're visualizing a more negative future. You're using your imagination for bad rather than for good. Now, knowing at the end of the day, the best way to shift out of your corporate job is to understand that you need all of the values met. You need safety, you need security, you need protection, and you need purpose, meaning passion, joy, fun, legacy, and happy and content children all at the same time. And how can you leverage that? Maybe it looks a little bit like this. Maybe it looks like getting one job in the morning and work on your business in the evening and in the afternoon and the weekends. Maybe it doesn't look like a vacation on Bali for four months to figure it out. So if you're interested in figuring it out with me specifically in an NLP training in Bali, Mexico, Los Angeles, Miami, or even online, or as a coach, if you like to explore it, just then send my back office team a message, an email, globalnoptraining.com is where you can find us. And I'd be happy to even send you a goal setting visualization using NLP neuroscience and positive psychology to help prime your brain to achieve this and get the worry and the anxiety down and be logical about it and effective about it. So that's my take and I wish you lots of luck by unleashing your change, chains, stepping into purpose and resolving this corporate job dilemma once and for all.